A trip to the border. Sheriff Donnie Youngblood talks about his visit with the president. The life of rapper Nipsey Hussle is remembered by fans, friends, and family. An accused hacker, Julian Assange, is in custody seven years after skipping bail in London. This is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Maddie Jansen. We begin with 17 News at Noon with breaking news of a bomb squad response in Delano that has shut down Highway 99. There's a heavy law enforcement presence in the area of County Line Road and High Street. That's very close to the Delano Police Department as High Street runs right by it. Delano's police chief tells us it's a suspicious device on the southbound 99 on-ramp. The California Highway Patrol has closed the 99 freeway in both directions from County Line Road to Cecil Avenue. We have a news crew en route, and we will keep you posted on our website, KGET.com, as well as on our KGET Facebook and Twitter pages as soon as we learn more. Sheriff Donnie Youngblood was on 17 News at Sunrise this morning talking about his trip to the border last week with President Donald Trump. Earlier this week, we learned border crossings were at a 12-year high for March. More than 53,000 people traveling as part of families were apprehended up from 36,000 in February. Sheriff Youngblood said he spoke to Border Patrol who told him people would take taxis along the border until they got to an open area, then cross into the U.S. He called the experience eye-opening. The border security is an issue that is not a President Trump issue. It's a national security issue that we need to look at. People need to put Trump out of the equation, put Congress out of the equation, and look at our border security and then demand that Congress take action and, and come up with a plan for uh, people to come to this country to migrate, and it, but it can't be illegally. Sheriff Youngblood also talked about Assembly Bill 392. The bill would change use of force rules for police. It would allow officers to use deadly force only when necessary to prevent imminent and serious injury or death, as opposed to when reasonable. Sheriff Youngblood called the effort dangerous. He said it would create dangerous situations for officers who have to make split-second life-or-death decisions. The sheriff says he's, he favors a bill being supported by the Sheriff's Association that emphasizes de-escalation. Thousands poured into the Staples Center in Los Angeles this morning to pay tribute to murdered rapper Nipsey Hussle. Hermes was visionary. Hermes was energetic. Hermes was full of hope. Hermes of, was full of life. The Grammy-nominated rapper was shot and killed last month in front of his clothing store that he tried to use to empower his South Central neighborhood. He was open about joining a gang when he was a teen and vocal in trying to change that culture. He had been scheduled to meet with LAPD to discuss ending gang violence the day after he died. Police in London have arrested WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange at the Ecuadorian embassy on a court warrant dating back to 2012. He's also wanted in the United States in connection with an alleged conspiracy to hack into computers to get classified information. Assange was taken to a London magistrate's court where a judge convicted him of skipping bail seven years ago. NBC's Kelly Kobayea reports from London. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is being held here at the central London police station after being arrested on a warrant for skipping bail back in 2012. That's when he sought refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy here in London in order to avoid being extradited to Sweden on allegations of rape and sexual assault. This morning, Ecuador's president announced via Twitter that he was withdrawing Assange's asylum status for what he called repeated violations to inter national conventions. But it now appears there is more to it than that. The Metropolitan Police in London announcing that Assange has been further arrested on behalf of the United States, arrested after he arrived here at the jail on an extradition warrant. Assange, of course, founded WikiLeaks, the organization behind the massive classified document dump back in 2010. The organization also behind the release of emails stolen from the Democratic National Committee and then released in the 2016 election. A source directly familiar with this situation tells NBC News that the U.S. is in fact making plans to extradite Assange in connection with sealed federal charges. The nature and extent of the criminal case unclear, but that source tells NBC News it is related to conduct dating back to the early days of WikiLeaks. This morning, Assange's lawyer says that he is uh, simply a foreign journalist publishing true information. Back to you. 
Arvin's new top cop hopes to get more officers on the streets. Chief Scott Kimball was officially sworn in on Tuesday. Kimball has spent 30 years in public service, most recently serving as the McFarland Police Chief. He acknowledges Arvin PD isn't where it needs to be when it comes to staffing. Out of 22 spots designated for officers, just 15 are filled. And we will fill those vacancies. Uh, we have recruitment, ongoing recruitment. And so that recruitment is similar to many police departments. We are continuing to accept applications and we review those applications and any folks that are qualified for the, those positions, whether it's a lateral entry police officer or someone who's just coming out of the police academy, um, those folks are invited back for the hiring process. FBI-backed crime statistics show that during Kimball's time in McFarland, crime dropped. McFarland was most recently designated as California's 56th safest city out of some 265. Kimball says he hopes to help bring about a similar public safety record to Arvin. The DMV is working to quickly make California Real IDs federally compliant. Yesterday, we told you the state fell short on meeting federal requirements when issuing Real IDs. As a result, starting April 29th, all Californians who apply for a Real ID will have to show two documents to verify their address. Anyone who already has the ID will need to submit a second proof of residence. But the DMV says those people will not have to return to an office. If you have one of these Real ID driver licenses or identification cards, we're going to send you a letter to let you know how you can satisfy that second residency requirement without coming into a field office. The DMV says it did not make any mistakes in issuing real IDs. Homeland Security changed its rules to require a second proof of address after California started issuing the cards. The Bakersfield Police Department just announced officers will be on the lookout for people driving under the influence this weekend. BPD is holding a DUI checkpoint Saturday night. It will start at 6 o'clock and run through 2 a.m. Sunday. BPD wants people to remind people that DUI does not just mean alcohol. It's any substance that can impair your driving. As we've reported, even though BPD does not announce where the checkpoint will be, the department still announces them ahead of time because studies show the notices can deter people from driving under the influence. We're just two days away from the 5th Annual Dancing at the Stars competition and fundraiser at Stars Theater in downtown Bakersfield. This is video of some of the pairs we're rehearsing last night during 17 News at 5 and 6. 17's Sammy Milchok is competing along with choreographer Roland Brown against seven other couples. It's a fundraiser for the Stars Theater, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Tickets for Friday's preview show and Saturday's main event are sold out, but you can still get tickets for Sunday's Encore show. And don't forget to vote for your favorite pair online. It's just $1 per vote. We've posted a link on our website, kget.com. Welcome back in your Health Watch. A local mother who lost her infant daughter to a rare disease has dedicated much of her life to educating the public and trying to support other families. She's taking her message to the state Senate and hopes to find other local families whose lives were changed forever by this devastating disease. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia, also known as CDH, is a condition that affects newborns and too often takes their lives soon after they're born. Amber Bullard was over the moon when she found out she was finally pregnant in 2014. She says it was earth-shattering when her first child, Addison Rose, was born with a hole in her diaphragm, also known as CDH. The hole made by the disease allows the intestines to go into the baby's chest and occupy the space where lungs need to grow. I had planned for her to come home. I had her nursery done. I had diapers. I had wipes. I had clothes. I had toys. You know, I had everything that you want to have for a baby. And I came home with nothing. Baby Addison died 33 days after she was born. Bullard has used her loss as motivation to help other families. She's traveled to Washington, D.C. to give lawmakers a presentation on the birth defect, pleading for more research into what causes the disease. She's also worked with several people at the state level, uh, to acknowledge April as CDH Awareness Month by having a concurrent state resolution passed through the state Senate. Bullard's heading to Sacramento April 22nd, and she hopes other families affected by CDH will join her. If you're interested, you can email Bullard at addisonslegacy at gmail.com. Also in your health watch this afternoon, many cancer patients are using alternative forms of therapy instead of or in addition to conventional medicine. That's according to a new look at survey data of more than 3,000 cancer patients and survivors. A third of those patients reported using complementary or alternative therapies like herbal supplements, massage, acupuncture, and special diets and meditation. Among those patients, 29% didn't tell their doctors either because they didn't think they needed to know or the doctors simply didn't ask. 
Replacing the red meat in your diet with plant-based proteins could help lower your risk of heart disease. That's according to a new study from Harvard University. It showed people who ate a diet high in nuts, beans, and soy had lower cholesterol and blood pressure than red meat eaters. The art of decluttering has taken America by storm, a lot of it spurred by Marie Kondo's Netflix show Tidying Up, which encourages people to get rid of things that don't spark joy. The practice can lead to a tidier home, but doctors say it can also lead to powerful mental health benefits. Bianca Castro has more. This is how it started. And then it moved into all my shoes being in containers, and then I got this shoe Organizer For Dallas realtor Jordan McMakin, all these hangers had clothes on them that are given away to someone who could actually wear them. The realization of having too much. I had six tie-dye t-shirts. I was like, hmm, I might need those for something. <laughs> decluttering my room. Finally set in after telling her clients to practice the art of decluttering before listing their homes. I figured out this might actually benefit us too. Pretty simple. So she started to lean out her things. Took hair accessories from a thousand to a key 20 pieces <laughs> and discovered more than just organized cabinets that really has helped me declutter everything in my life what do you mean by that it's like as soon as i started organizing my closet and my drawers and the kitchen and compartmentalizing everything there was just clarity with other parts of my life and i know that sounds strange but i started getting organized with goals that i needed to do for the day planning out my week. It just stemmed into all facets of my life. The notion doesn't sound strange to psychologist Rebecca Corona. Having a cluttered environment sometimes makes it difficult to see the possibilities. And once it's clear, you're able to concentrate, see things a little bit better. Anything is possible, which can bring joy to someone. She says the physical act of decluttering can release the same endorphins as exercise, which make you feel emotionally better. And once you reach your goals, your space can become an instant de-stressor. Once we're able to see that we can cope and that we can manage without those belongings, we might feel better. And sometimes even just seeing that stuff makes us anxious. Proving that tidying up clears the mess and your mind. Psychologists say before you start decluttering, understand that the process will take time. They suggest you start with the space that bothers you the most, and they also say the best way to ensure you'll actually do it is to schedule it on your calendar. Back in your 17 Business Watch, and stocks are falling today. The Dow down 41 points so far in trading. The Nasdaq down 21. The S&P 500 down 2. Check in oil prices while we're at it. Those are also down today. West Texas Intermediate, 63.58 a barrel at last check. Midway Sunset started the day at 68.86 a barrel. Rite Aid is the latest drugstore chain to announce plans to sell cannabis-based topical items in 200 stores across Washington State and Oregon. The items will include CBD creams, lotions, and lip balms. Walgreens and CVS also recently introduced similar products in some of their stores. The non-psychoactive cannabis compound has become one of the hottest ingredients in consumer products. While CBD, which is derived from hemp, is now legal, the FDA has not approved it for use in food or beverage products, nor can it be sold as a dietary supplement. It's a big day for Disney. The entertainment giant set to unveil a family-friendly video streaming service at its headquarters in Burbank. Disney Plus will be an ad-free monthly subscription service with TV shows and movies. The service is expected to feature programming from the Marvel superhero universe and other films from the Disney Library, as well as exclusive and original content. Executives say new releases will appear on Disney Plus after their run in theaters. There's no word yet about pricing or other specific details. Welcome back. Two hikers missing on a California mountain for nearly five days are safe today. It was just supposed to be a day trip hiking on Southern California's Mount Baldy. But a young couple got lost for five days and had to rely on their wits and their experience to survive. NBC's Miguel Almaguer reports. Overnight, a miracle on the mountaintop. Thank you to uh, all the volunteers that were helping look for us. We were very grateful to be found tonight. A pair of hikers in Southern California found alive after going missing for nearly five days. We're both perfectly fine, no serious injuries. Eric DeSplinter and his girlfriend, Gabrielle Wallace, set off for a day-long hike in the snowy mountains near Mount Baldy last Saturday when they began veering off course. A former National Guardsman who served in Afghanistan, DeSplinter is a veteran climber who says the path got too rough. We just lost the trail. 
and had a little bit of a slip on the going to the peak of Cucamonga Peak uh, and decided we wouldn't go back up the ice and snow. So we tried to descend through a valley. Um, but that valley was more treacherous than we thought. Soaring more than 10,000 feet, Mount San Antonio, often referred to as Mount Baldy, is the tallest mountain in Los Angeles County. It's also considered one of the most dangerous and deadly mountains in the U.S. Rationed our food, drank water through a life straw, uh, kept as warm as possible. Authorities say search teams scoured 19,000 acres of rugged terrain for days. Finally, they discovered two sets of footprints and began following them then alerted a chopper crew of the coordinates. Helicopters flying over the area spotted the couple's campfire. To Splinter's mother, grateful for the rescuers. There's nothing that I could give them in return that would be good enough to, for me to express my gratitude for them. This morning, after a series of dangerously wrong turns led them on a days-long ordeal, a pair of hikers are thankful a trail of clues led to their rescue. That was Miguel Almaguer reporting. Kern County Search and Rescue sent three people from the China Lake Mountain Rescue Group based out of Ridgecrest to help. And by the way, this is National Volunteer Week. All search and rescue groups in Kern are volunteers.